a secretary for <coughs> Sullivan Hardware in Greenville for 11 years. And uh, then I retired from Belks. I worked for them 11 years as a auditor. And so just uh, may do. Uh, later on in my life, I became a CAD drafter and uh, uh, could, uh, you know, draw buildings and houses and things like that. But just, I had, had uh, retired uh, from my, my career at Clemson University and just kind of was bored. So I was out, you know, uh, one day just doing some job hunting and a good friend of mine said, well, the Pickens County Veterans Affairs Office has a job opening. I said, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> And you actually had to be elected for that. Well, the first position I held, I was hired. Okay. I, I, you know, I just, I did an employment application and was interviewed just like everybody else and was hired for that. I think the, the person had a, a goal in mind <laughs> when she hired me <laughs> because she, about a year and a half later, she announced her retirement. So she said would you be interested and I said I gotta think about that <laughs> but, how, how have you enjoyed working with veterans uh, I enjoy it I really do um, because it brings back the the days of my military when you know you know these people are my brothers and sisters that's how I feel every every uh, male and female veteran that comes through the door um, we just, you know, it's like we've known each other forever and we, we get to talking about our days, you know, and our experiences in the military. Um, and sometimes I do that too to help that veteran maybe, you know, especially you can tell sometimes they've had a rough day, just to kind of, you know, forget about their problems and, and you know, talk about something a little more you know, interesting. <laughs> so how long were you actually with FedEx? And 29 years. 29 years. Ago. Yes. And how did you end up at FedEx? Well, I really got out of, I was getting out of the Air Force and John and I were both looking for jobs and we didn't really know how the airlines worked. And they had just started taking um, retirees, which John was, but he had taken three years because we were married living in Del Rio. And so he was a little bit over the age they were looking for. So he originally got hired by a commuter in Salisbury, Maryland, that was a commuter for the old Piedmont Airlines out of um, Charlotte. And so I got hired originally by TWA, and I was based in New York. So we lived in Eastleigh, we had a baby, John was in Salisbury, Maryland. I was in New York. We would see each other at the Washington National Airport for like 15 minutes, and then we would go our separate ways. It was crazy. Currently at Clemson, I work for um, University Relations and as a professional communicator. I work in presidential communication, which is the type of job that I held as an officer throughout my uh, officer career as, in, as a public affairs officer in the Marine Corps. So what we did actually, um, we had decided that at this point we had worked for other people um, long enough. <laughs> so my husband and I um, basically became entrepreneurs. So we started one online business, um, then we started a, a brick and mortar store um, actually here in Easley, and that's what we decided to do instead of going back to work full time for someone else. So my service actually re relates directly to what I do professionally right now. I am a warrior advocate or a veteran advocate for a nonprofit here in the upstate of South Carolina called Upstate Warrior Solution. And I help connect veterans to resources in the community for housing, for employment, education benefits, um, VA healthcare, and really any needs a veteran could have. Uh, I help connect them to those resources. I was always, uh, just, it was just an honor to serve my country. I love my country. I love the flag. And it breaks my heart to see people burn the flag. And I look out there at the helicopter where Kimberly gave her life for our country. I think that sometimes in order to preserve something, you really, sometimes war is the only answer. I, I'm not necessarily um, uh, a war hawk, 
but I, but I think that sometimes you have to defend what you think is right. And uh, it's, it hasn't made me militant or anything like that, but sometimes you have to be, that's a necessity. And uh, the Bay of Pigs fiasco was going on during, while I was in the military. And uh, it was in April of 1961, and it was a failed, failed, uh, a failed mission to overthrow Fidel Castro. And uh, I, you know, I had to read a lot of secret documents at the time. And so um, it was, it was trying, it's trying to, you know, know what was right and all that. But, yeah. but my attitude is, uh, I think that if you have a strong military, you stand a better chance of being a peaceful country. I knew why I signed up, what, you know, a what if could be. And I was, you know, prepared to do that if I had to, you know. And I, I came to a couple of times where that almost happened with Desert Storm and then the war that was called after 9-11. But, but fortunately, I guess it wasn't meant for me to have to be in a war, so. When, especially when it comes to Afghanistan, I have a unique view on, on what's going on there and why we're there. Um, I also feel like in my job, the last six years at the headquarters level, at the Pentagon level, I have also a unique perspective um, for me personally on you know the bigger picture of how things work and how the politics play in. So I always tell people it's it. There's a lot more nuance. There's a lot bigger picture than most people know. It's and also having worked with media, um, I'm a I'm a fan of the media. I worked with them my whole career. But there's also usually there's layers beyond that. So I just want everyone, whether they're veterans or whether they have no military experience at all, is to just learn as much as you can about an issue because it's never just a headline deep. Yes, my service in the military certainly impacted the way I, I view war um, and the military in general. So I think just really what that does for me, I think what I would say is what has impacted more about it is how I describe the military to people and for young people especially who are looking to join the military, mm -hmm. what it has done is um, really impacted how I explain what they need to think about before they join. So um, you mentioned war, you mentioned military and those two are one, they go together and that's one thing that I think a lot of people forget. Um, a lot of people focus on the benefits and the lifestyle and um, the ooh and ah because of this cool jet but at the end of the day you have to remember that when you sign up to serve you're signing up for a particular mission and that mission is war and if you're not at the end of the day willing to do that then I do not suggest the military for you. I think there is this glorified idea of what the military is through uh, media what we see on the news and what we see in movies and TV shows and I learned that a lot of the uh, military, at least a lot of the Navy in my experience, is really just um, waiting around and cleaning. Lots of cleaning. Um, so kind of gave me a different perspective on that and I really took that to heart when I, when I watch movies and stuff now. I, I think about how that is probably the highlights of the most exciting parts of a job. It affected me, my husband uh, was a career man, mm -hmm. and we went everywhere. Uh, all I could, he was in radar, and they sent him to remote sites to get installed, and I, we couldn't go sometime. It was a year in Canada, and of course Vietnam, mm -hmm. and uh, so we couldn't go, and uh, so he came back from Vietnam and uh, never felt good was in Agent Orange probably. They didn't recognize that then. And he passed away at 50 years old. Oh, so sorry. it affected my life. <laughs> I, got to, I got to travel, I got to move. You know, when I lived in Delaware, I lived in New York, New Jersey, and Delaware, and I, I really wanted to see this country. And I was hoping that I would be, you know, at different duty stations during my tenure, but it didn't happen. But at least I did get to move to Norfolk, Virginia, and then uh, to uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina. So in the military, I did at least do that. I love traveling. 
I think my experience has made me a stronger person. Uh, prior to being in the military, I was more of a quiet, reserved person. Now I think I'm more outgoing, more um, uh, aware of things and better able to handle certain situations sometimes that maybe, you know, not having the experience, I might have just kind of shrunk away from. <laughs> I will always treasure uh, the time that I, I had in service. Um, the years that I got to, to go overseas, the, the duties that I had, I say sometimes I went from one extreme to another as far as my duties were concerned. But I think it's all part of, you know, those life lessons. And I think, you know, between the two, I had those experiences and I can say, well, I've been able to do this and I've been able to do that. And um, I think it's just made me a, a stronger and a better and to have a, a more positive outlook on life. But I will always go back to, it was the opportunity that I was given at Clemson University that opened the door for me to get to do all the amazing things I got to do. Um, to, and the people that were very supportive, the Colonel, that kept pushing for me to get my pilot slot, who encouraged, and I'm sure the fact that he chose me as to be the first fo uh, female commander of ROTC probably had a huge impact on me getting my pilot slot. Um, the fact that I majored in mechanical engineering, once again, I was the only girl in the class usually. So, um, but I would always say it's back to Clemson University, and I think that that is the reason that our public universities are so important because we need to make sure every child has an opportunity. And, you know, if, if we start going to the point where it's just people with money get to go have the opportunities, then once again, we live in a very competitive world. We gotta make sure everybody gets that chance. So I'll, I'll, I'll give a shout out to Clemson University and what they did. My experience in the Marine Corps impacts everything I do. Um, it's, it impacts the way I approach things, the way I think of things. Um, all in a good way. Um, it has it transformed me back in that summer at Paris Island, but it but it can I continue to grow um, throughout my service. Um, I still approach things as a service. I consider the opportunity to come here is a great op a great opportunity to continue that type of service. Um, it's how I approach dog rescue. Strangely enough, it's um, it's how I approach people. Um, it's just you, the things of that you learn in the Marine Corps, it's our core values of honor, courage, commitment. That applies to anything. When I joined the Marine Corps, we used to say back then, the fewer the prouder um, of, in terms of women Marines. Um, when I joined, the Marine Corps only had 5% women. It's currently up to, I think, maybe 9%. So there's still not many of us. And so I always take the opportunity to represent and to educate. Um, but I, I, I tell you right now, it was still one of the best experiences. I take pride in the fact that there's not many uh, women Marines out there because it's not for everyone. And um, I'm, I'm just glad to be part of the club and, and get to claim the title. So, wow, it impacts your life a lot, I think, um, you know, with the military life. So I think first and foremost, and maybe just overall, it just has made me a better person. Um, I think I learned a lot about myself that I didn't know existed. Um, I'm a lot stronger than I thought it was, <laughs> um, both physically and mentally. Um, I think that it, it definitely changes my viewpoint on a lot of things, um, you know, where I'm, not that I've ever been not an open person, but just, you know, again, with the military, learning to accept um, every person that walks in the door, because no matter what the background is that we're all working together. It really emphasizes that teamwork. Um, and so, you know, again, just learning to appreciate each person and what they bring to the table, learning to appreciate, excuse me, appreciate other people's viewpoints, um, I think is, is definitely huge. Um, and I think, you know, again, it's definitely made me, I think it's made me a more confident person. I look at myself from when I first joined the military to who I am today, night and day. 
um, night and day for sure. So, I mean, I got run over. Just <laughs> bottom line, when I first joined the military, I just got run over because I did not know how to speak up. I didn't know, you know, how to stand up for not necessarily myself, but really it was for my people because, you know, as an officer, you're a leader and you have to be able to, to speak up and take care of the people that you're responsible for. And so those are some lessons that I had to learn um, early on, but, but I got it. <laughs> My service has affected my life because I saw a deficit of mental health resources while I was in the military for myself and for other service members and so I've really kind of made it my mission to make sure that service members are able to get connected to mental health resources and kind of help fight that stigma against mental health um, and taking care of your mental health. And so that's really shaped the direction I'm going in my career and my life. When I was in, it was just wonderful. And I had no, uh, I loved it. You know, I loved every minute of it. So I would say just uh, follow your heart. If you really don't mind work, you don't mind uh, being told what to do, go for it. I would encourage them to. I think it teaches you to be organized. It teaches you to have some self-control. Um, a lot of times when you go to college, you're, you know, you binge drink on the weekends and, uh, and you half the time you miss your studies and I uh, think there's a lot of wasted time. I, college is good, but uh, a lot of times when they come out of high school and they go to college, they, I think they just don't take it serious enough. Whereas if you go into the military, I think the military life teaches you how to have some responsibility and it's something you just can't say, oh, I hate this job, I quit, because that's not the way it's supposed to be. I would say go for it. And the reason I do that is because I think it actually helps make you stronger. Uh, I'm not saying that because you don't go in the military, you're not going to be a strong you know, woman, but I think it just gives you that discipline, gives you a little respect, gives you that, oh, look, this is something I've accomplished on my own. And so I encourage anybody that asks, you know, especially the women, you know. I'll have to say that a few years ago, I watched the movie The Invisible War, I think it's called, about women who are, um, sexually, well, all people who are sexually abused in the military, and that is still to this day a huge problem. And I think they need to be very aware of that. And I would say tragically, um, this is just my opinion, I am extremely opinionated, that I think college campuses are better. The military hopefully is moving toward better. But any situation where the person in charge gets to decide how those cases are treated, nobody wants it to be on their watch. Nobody wants it to happen. But until I think we find a way to hold the, the jury and the accountability and the people who are found guilty have to pay for their actions, that's how our democracy works. That until we get to that point and, and kind of separate it from the person at the top who it will either, it could potentially stain their record, then people are not safe. And I think that's something that we need to work on. I think every young person, every young woman, even though I have had a great career, and fortunately I had no serious problems, um, it is a big problem that we still need to look at. And, um, you know, we do live in a very, you know, there's a lot of forensic science that can tell us exactly what went on. So if we would investigate and prosecute and hold responsible, then I think that would help. So um, barring that, which doesn't happen to everybody, that, um, oh my gosh, being a pilot's a great job. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to say I have a granddaughter. My stepson that lives in Texas, his daughter loves horses. And so um, I've been trying to convince her that the great thing about being a pilot is that fortunately you do make good money and you have a lot of time off. So I'm hoping that maybe she'll decide she can pursue her horse career if she becomes her pilot. So. <laughs>
for any young lady that wants to pursue a career in the military, first I want to say it's it's great. It's there are so many opportunities. You will grow whether you're in for four years or 20 years. Um, but also say find your match. You know, do your research. Talk to the services. You know. It's, it's all about the fit and what is it you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? I'll tell you right now, I never planned on being in the military and when I did join, I never planned on staying for an entire career. I was going to do four years and out. But I, you know, I took the opportunities as they presented themselves. I also made some opportunities happen. So um, there's, it's there for you. Your the doors are there for you. Um, there's a lot you have to do to qualify. So get educated. If it's something you want to do, find out about it now. So because we're not, the military is not going to bend to meet you. You have to reach to meet it. So, um, so just go for it. You know, as, as a young woman that's looking into the military, I say go for it. Um, I have absolutely no reason to tell anyone anything different. I had a wonderful experience in the military. Um, I, Of course there are pros and cons to every job, um, but particularly as a woman I know there are a lot of things that, um, a lot of experiences that are negative for a lot of other women um, who are in the military, but I personally did not have any of those. Um, and I, so I say again to any young woman who's interested in joining the military, I say go for it. Whatever you're interested in, work hard and, and go get it. But that's something that you have to remember is that it's about working hard. Um, you can't just go, well, I, I want to be the first woman to X, Y, or Z. You have to understand that it's going to take a lot of work to get there. Um, and if you want, no matter what it is that you want to do, um, you have to work for it. You know, overall, people always say, well, would you do it again? Um, yes, I absolutely would join the military again. Would you recommend it to other people? Yes, I absolutely would. But again, going back to what I had said on just really looking at the military for what it is and ensure that it's a good fit for you and what you want for your life. Um, not looking at just, you know, again, just benefits or things that you can get out of it, but, um, you know, are you, are you willing to do what the military calls you to do? I would give the advice of stick to your guns and um, if you see something that you know is not right or you feel is not right, definitely say something. Um, it's not always better to be the popular one. Sometimes you need to stand up for the correct option. 